Welcome everybody. So here is our presentation for what's new in ETE. Every year we come up with new ideas, new things that we can provide you for professional development, and we like to keep you abreast of all of that. So we have one really piece of big news, and I should probably introduce myself first, right? Yeah. So I'm Shelly Arnold, if you don't know, and I'm the ETE Instructional Coordinator. This is Travis Thurston, and he's coming on today to talk about our really big news that we have. So Travis, that's all you. Yeah, we're, we're really excited uh, starting this academic year. Uh, we're moving reporting lines over to the provost office. Uh, we've had a lot of collaborations uh, with the folks over there in the past, uh, but now uh, we'll be integral to the, the programs and, and all the events that they're putting on, and we'll continue to work together. So does it change anything of what we offer to our instructors or anything like that? Does it make it more difficult for them in any way? No. Still the same <laughs> great service. That's excellent. Does it provide any additional benefits for us by being over there? Um, it helps us to continue to work closely, um, especially with uh, Vice Provost Paul Barr um, in, in a lot of the work that we've been doing with the ETE badging. Nice. So this is the right move for ET, right? Yes, this will be fantastic for us. Perfect. Well, I love this, and everything's a little bit still up in the air, but again, where it's not going to interfere with the service that ET provides you and all of our instructors to improve teaching at the university. So more news on that to come. Well, thanks, Travis. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so moving into the butts... <laughs> So moving into the nuts and bolts of the changes we're ma we've made over the last year, what we plan to be making this upcoming academic year, is we're going to talk about some of our professional development events that we've cultivated over this last year. There's been quite a few. So you've watched my weekly announcements or read those announcements, so you've seen these things, but I want to let you know a little bit more about what they are and what you can expect. So this is brand new one. So our ET seminar series has changed over the last couple of years with COVID. And what we've seen is a huge decline in the people coming to our seminar series, which we would have two or three seminars every semester. People want to attend on Zoom. People are not coming in person. And we just had to completely rethink this. So what our faculty committee decided on, instead of having multiple seminars a year, what we would do is hold a larger event late January, early February, where we bring a guest speaker in, and they would be related to the theme. Every year ET has a theme. And this year, it's going to be Kristen Blinn and her grading justice. So over the last couple of years, ETE and our instructors and faculty have really gotten into this idea of ungrading. So we decided to bring in Kristen Blinn to talk about that. And in the fall, we're going to have learning circles based on the book, and the learning circle groups are going to be able to meet with her. There'll be more information about when exactly the seminar is going to be and what we're going to hold for that entire day coming forward in the fall. But again, put it tentatively on your schedules for the end of January and early February. What this means is our traditional seminar series of having instructors come in twice a semester. We're going to discontinue that, but we do have things like spark shops, which will take their place, and we'll hold multiple ones of those virtually over the semester. So don't worry, still providing great material for you guys. Next up is our current enrollment workshop. So Travis and I and ETE are working really closely with the concurrent enrollment. ETE provides professional development for all instructors at the university. The better our instructors, the better experience we have for our students, and the more that they can learn here. And our concurrent enrollment instructors are really important to our culture at the university. So we're working with the registrar's office who concurrent enrollment instructors fall under, and we had our first ever this March, our concurrent enrollment workshop where people from departments who are overseeing their concurrent enrollment and concurrent enrollment instructors all over the state of Utah came in and attended about a three-hour workshop late in the afternoon in March. This was really successful in getting them the resources they needed, the guidance on what to expect, on how they could get their classes reviewed by their department, and just keeping track of each other so we're all on the same page. We are going to hold another event like this next March, so please keep a lookout for that. If you have any questions or if you'd like anybody to have more information on this event, you please reach out to me or Tony Givens, and we can help set those things up with your concurrent enrollment instructors or your facilitator who oversees them. Next up, we have launch, and this was the first time for this event as well. This is not an ET event directly, but it's an ET affiliated event, and what this is is based on the learning specialists, and our learning specialists 
put on this event so that they can work with a few instructors, five to 10, and work on different ways in which they can engage their students in different learning strategies and collaboration. What this was, was a three day event, two and a half, two and a half day event, where the learning specialist would work one on one with instructors, teach them particular techniques, and start ingraining them in their class immediately. You would then have follow up with those learning specialists and help with the implementation process throughout the upcoming summer and semester. This event happened in mid May, and again, this is the plan for that as well. If you're interested about this or just want to work with a learning specialist not at this event but need, want to know more about learning strategies, again, please, please contact me or Melanie Chambers. Next up and last for our professional development events is VITAL. This workshop came about last conference when we were talking about teaching portfolio and a lot of instructors came and said, hey, is there something like this for our VITAL faculty, which is visiting instructor, term, adjunct, or lecture in their title? And there wasn't really anything for them. So ET worked over last year with a lot of different people. And what we came up with is our vital teaching portfolio workshop. These are for specifically our vital faculty, which allows them to, for a day and a half, in a very intensive butts in the seats, getting it done, putting together their teaching portfolio. Teaching philosophy, self-assessment data, evaluation of their own teaching over time. Because again, why we have the ET 10 program is it can be really difficult to kind of document our teaching improvement. But what this day and a half workshop teaches our instructors is how to use what they're doing, what they've done, and show the benefits that either their professional development, years of teaching, or really just research have done to improve their teaching over time. This was an outstanding event. We got wonderful reviews from everybody who attended this event, and we will be holding this in the future. If you want to know more information about this event, please contact me. Uh, or our faculty committee. Moving on, programs. So this is less about new programs we're offering because we've been offering these for a year and more about just updates on what we've been offering and what you can expect this next academic year. Scott's. <laughs> Scott's has really taken off. You guys have accepted this and really clung on to that student perspective that you can get from our Scott's, our student collaborators on teaching. And over the last year, we've done over 22 different Scots reviews for classes, and I've gotten really good feedback from people working with Lou, people working with Addie, and really getting that perception that, yes, our students are part of this teaching community, and yes, they have valid feedback that can help us be better, right? The new thing I want to mention about our Scots program is sign up early. When you see that announcement for Scots to sign up, do that as soon as possible, because what we found is it's so popular that you guys are actually outpacing our Scots. They did a great job keeping track of all of them this semester, last semester, but as you'll see when we talk about ET10, there's gonna be an increase in demand. So if you're looking for the service, sign up early so that we can get you on the books to get this done and ready when it's good for you. Next up is we have peer review. Peer review, again, has been something that's really blossomed in ET over the last year. We have signed up for reviewers, which I sent out a couple weeks ago, and we'll have our peer reviews coming up, and I'll announce that September when we're going to be accepting those. This coming year, we are looking for feedback on the documentation we give. It's long, it's kind of bulky, right? And you can use documentation for your peer review specific to your department or college if you want, but a lot of colleges don't have that kind of documentation. However, because it's bulky, people aren't using our documentation either. So we need some feedback on that as well. So our reviewers and our reviewees, if you can take that survey at the end, we would really appreciate getting that feedback so we can actually give you something that works for you. Funding and awards. So we have one to talk about here and you can apply until next March. So stress, don't get stressed, but I want to explain what SODAL is because I don't think it's fully understood with people who are getting the announcements for people who are thinking about applying. So our SODAL scholars is, this is the scholarship of teaching and learning. And what we're doing is taking things we're doing in the classroom and diving deeper into why they're working, why they're not, setting up experiments with our classes about new implementations and really doing this in an evidence-based scientific way. So what essentially this is, is teaching research, okay? What I really wanna make clear to everybody who's watching today is you do not have to have past experience in teaching research 
to earn the grant to be part of the SOTL scholars. Actually, it's of more benefit to you on the rubric that we use that you don't. We don't think that people who have done a bunch of teaching and <laughs> learning research need this total program. They already know what they're doing, they know how to approach it, and they can be mentors within their own department or colleges. We are looking for people who don't have this experience, who want to come in and learn all the way through IRB approval, doing a different type of lit review, and working with their classes that way. We want to be able to teach you those things. So this program is actually set up for novices and amateurs in this field, okay? That's a really confusing point that people didn't understand, and we are completely revamping it. We have a brand new SOTL scholar. His name is Chris Babbitts. If you haven't met him, you should. He's a great guy and a great resource here at the university. He's gonna be our SOTL scholar, and he's gonna oversee it for the next two years. So if you have any questions about what to expect, again, you have several months before you have to worry about this. Applications aren't due until March. Um, please reach out to me or directly to Chris Babbitts or anybody who's been part of our Teaching Scholar program before. Publications, <laughs> our open book series. So we do have two new books that are coming out. Explore, by the time you guys see this, Explore How, how We Teach is gonna be out. And that is a book about graduate students in higher education and their teaching experience and lessons they learned. And it's really amazing. Sam Clem is the editor of that. It take, took us a little bit longer to get out than we thought, but it's gonna be out before the conference. So you're gonna be seeing posts about that through our social media through Canvas and even something at the conference. So I'm excited about that and I'll let you more know more about that soon. Making Connections, which is our mentoring handbook edited by David Law, um, USU, and that's going to be coming out this September, hopefully. Something always comes up when you're editing books or getting those set up, but we're hoping that that's gonna be done September and that's gonna be an amazing book as well because we've done a lot of different types of mentoring at the university. We're looking to take that to the next step. So if you're looking on resources about how to mentor at the university, mentor each other, mentoring students, this will be a great resource. And if you haven't seen my announcements all summer, our new book for our open book series is Habits of Mind, and that's going to be edited by Chris Babbitts and Julia Gossard. That is only for USU instructors, and that's gonna be coming out next year. So exciting things and again I'll keep you posted when all of that comes out and any important dates that you're going to need to know. Next up is we have G and G. We put out a special issue this year. We have a new editor, assistant editor. So Jason Olson stepped up to be our editor after being assistant editor for a couple years and Nichelle Frank stepped into his position as assistant editor and we're really happy and excited that we get to work with both of them moving forward. Remember that you can always there's always an open call for submitting journals or journal articles to JEET, and you can always sign up to be a peer reviewer. There's a special, and if you watch the other asynchronous session we have with Jason and Michelle, you can always sign up to be a peer reviewer there as well, and they have a whole list of people that they can work for and work through. You can also earn a badge either for submitting and publishing an article or being a peer reviewer for JEET. So there's benefits in every way that you have for that. Last up, and some of the most important things, um, because it won't be continuously announced, so lock in and pay attention on this one, is our ET10 badging program. We have many new badges this last year. Our ET10 and our faculty committee decided that we, they were gonna revamp the badging, which is a great thing. We had badges that weren't really used, badges that we weren't covering, and um, things that we needed to promote differently. So. Through that, we de decommissioned some badges. I talked about that last semester, but we have a lot of new badges. One of them is our media production badge, which is coming into this beautiful studio and working with Trent or Ryan on creating professional, sustainable, curriculum-based videos for your classes. So I love this badge, it's one of my favorites. We also have Stodal Journal, and this is the badge where you can actually do some evidence-based learning. We're gonna, there's a lot of offerings under that badge of different places you can find journal articles on teaching. You review them, you look at them, and that sets you up for an engaged badge. If you move on, actually use that journal article in your teaching, that sets you up for an implement. So that's a badge that I feel like we were missing for a while <clears throat> that we could really benefit in our instruction. We also have our student mentoring, so engage and implement, a little bit different. 
when you're learning about student mentoring, either through our statewide program or through outside programs, you can apply for the Engage. And then once you start doing student mentoring, you can apply for the Implement. Teaching journal, and this was specifically made for graduate students, but anyone can apply. This is keeping a teaching journal. <laughs> this is keeping a teaching journal throughout the semester, submitting that for the engage, and then if you make changes based on the notes that you've taken and what you've learned, that's the implement there as well. Vital teaching portfolio. Obviously, we need to make a badge because we had the event. Our learning specialist, so working with Dennis Kohler, Melanie Chamber, Sharon Lyman, and working with putting learning strategies into your class. And then last but not least, and this was, this was highly demanded by many people on the faculty committee, on the subcommittees, and even you guys out there. I was fighting against it, but I don't always win these. And we have second learning circle badges. And what that means is um, you have a learning circle badge for all of the different learning circles, evidence-based, DMIT, foundations, all of these things. Well, people are really excited about learning circles. They're like, we want more badges that we can apply for. And so they voted those in and I made those earlier this month and they're there. And I'm really excited that learning circles are so popular with our faculty. So keep learning, keep growing, keep attending these. And now you can apply for um, ET learning circle evidence-based second engage, right? There you go. You, you said it and we listened. This is the big piece because this takes effect right after the conference, okay? So, I regards the master teaching certificate. So, this is the second certificate that you can earn, the teaching scholar being the first, and once you move on from there, right now there's only two requirements, which is you need to earn the set amount of badges, which is three contributes, three implements, and four engages, and then you have to either attend the ET conference and contribute there, or contribute to JEET. Those are the only requirements. That's changing. The first requirement is that besides choosing between contributing to the conference and the journal, that's still a requirement, you now have to either do a Scots implement, so if the Scots come in and implement one of their suggestions or many of their suggestions into your class, or do a peer review and implement those in. We think that by the time people come to the Master Teacher Certificate, they should be ready and willing to take um, critical feedback to help them improve on their teaching. And the faculty committee and the ET TED subcommittee decided that this was an important one that we should add. Last but not least is we're starting to make tracks on the Master Teacher. And this is going to take time. It's going to take a couple years for us to get it the way that it is, at least for the teaching scholar. And the first track that we have is our community engaged learning track. And there are set badges just like there is on a teaching scholar and you can opt into this or not. The more tracks that we get on the master teacher, the better opportunities we'll have for our instructors. And all of these tracks have come through collaborations. The one that we did last year, the sustainability on the teaching scholar came from working with the sustainability council. This one came from working with community engaged learners, um, the <laughs> community engaged learning group. And we're going to continue to make those collaborations and work for you on what professional development you guys are looking for. But again, this is going to be something that's open, so I'll have learning circles and different events associated with this specific towards this track that anybody can attend. And over time, we'll start adding those tracks. But I do want to let you know that while this is an option for you to earn on your master teacher and have that printed on there, this is not a requirement that you have to do as, as of yet. You can still pick the individualized track and just do those two required badges that I had talked about previously, okay? This will take effect right after the conference because that's how our ETE year works, okay? So anybody who hasn't earned their master teacher yet um, but has worked towards it, it's still going to apply to you. If you have any issue with that, please contact me as always. And thank you. I really appreciate all that our faculty does for ET to support it, to promote it. And if I can do anything to help you in your professional development journey, please reach back out to me. And I would love to do that because I love my job. And here are our contact points. We have the email, we have the website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Empowered Teaching, and the YouTube station, which you'll be able to find this particular video. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you on the 17th.